If you watch a lot of atheist videos, you've probably seen this video that's been spammed around in the comment sections for a while that purports to annihilate atheism with one sentence. This sentence uses the argument from design, essentially. It says, since a sandcastle can't be accidental because it's too orderly, neither could DNA. Whoever posted this seems to think that DNA just popped into existence fully formed one day. If that were the case, the argument might have some merit. This, however, is not likely what happened. The process of evolution didn't start with the first strand of DNA. It started with the first self-replicating molecules that worked their way up to DNA. In the description box of the video, there is a list of common objections and rebuttals to them. Objection 1. What made God? Rebuttal? The natural law of cause and effect applies only to natural things. The proposition of a not natural, that is supernatural, entity is not subject to it because of that. So let me put the question another way. Why does God exist instead of not existing. You may say that God exists necessarily, but why does God exist necessarily? If your explanation is that necessary existence is just part of God's definition, then you're essentially saying that God exists necessarily because he's God, which is a circular argument. Also, it can't be the case that God exists by logical necessity. If God existed by logical necessity, then a universe in which God did not exist would be inconceivable. But I find I can very easily conceive of a universe in which God does not exist. Objection 2. Sandcastles don't evolve. Rebuttal. Genetic evolution is not the issue. The origin of DNA is the issue. There is no genetic evolution without DNA. So implying that the original DNA evolved into existence is like saying that a woman was in her own womb in order to be born. Nonsense. It's circular reasoning. It is likely not the case that there is no evolution without DNA. All that is necessary for evolution is self-replicating molecules that are subject to natural selection. The earliest self-replicating molecules were likely simple enough that they could easily have come about by chance and then evolved into DNA. One hypothesis is that DNA evolved from simpler strands of RNA, for example. I'm not sure where one gets the idea that evolution absolutely cannot occur without DNA. Objection 3. You can't compare DNA to sandcastles. Rebuttal. You're saying that I cannot compare great order with great order. Listen to yourself. Well, the main difference between sandcastles and DNA is that sandcastles are not subject to natural selection. Natural selection is what created and shaped DNA, but there is no such process by which sandcastles are created and shaped. That's why it's not a great analogy. Objection 4. You're just repeating the watchmaker argument. Rebuttal. This structure is never seen to be unintended despite countless chances, so why not? Empirical experience shows that unintended events regress order far more than they progress it. For example, erosion. Accidents are regressive, so they cannot ultimately account for any high level of order. Actually, they can if you have enough of those accidents. And those accidents are filtered by a process of natural selection. The relatively tiny increase in order that we see in evolution is only possible because of the massive decrease in order that causes the sun to give off the energy that's necessary for evolution to occur. Elsewhere in the description box it says that for every step forward accidents take in order, they take a hundred backwards. That's absolutely right. That's entropy. And for every step forward that evolution takes, the sun takes not just a hundred steps backward, but probably trillions of steps backward. The origin of DNA is only a tiny increase in order compared to the colossal increase in disorder caused by the sun's nuclear fusion that supplies the energy that made the formation of DNA possible. Objection 5. Snowflakes prove you wrong since they're very orderly and yet no one creates them. Rebuttal? You are cheating because you do not begin at the origin, which is the origin of the natural laws which make snowflakes possible. Well, actually, people are the origin of natural laws. People make them up to describe experience. Natural laws don't come from God. And it continues, The second law of thermodynamics extrapolated backwards means that there was a heat birth just as there will be, unless God intervenes, a heat death. This heat birth was when thermodynamics and physical laws began to work. They did not exist beforehand unless a force maintained the heat birth or nature reincarnated, both of which require intelligence since such a high level of order can't be achieved with mindless processes that wind things down and break things down far more than they build things up. Well, it can be achieved with mindless processes if you have enough of those mindless processes. For example, if we live in a multiverse. Yes, orderly universes are likely far less common than disorderly ones, but if there is a high enough number of universes in the multiverse, then even the most improbable universes can become probable. But even if this is the only universe, the vast unlikelihood of its fine-tuning coming about by chance still seems more probable to me than a timeless, spaceless, disembodied mind who created the universe with magic. Objection 6. You have a god of the gaps. Rebuttal. It is not an argument from ignorance to say that you can't reach high levels of order when for every step forward you take towards greater order you take a hundred backwards. 
No, I wouldn't call this an argument from ignorance. I'd call it a false dichotomy. One cannot assume that a universe must be either chaotic or the product of a mind. Those are not the only two options.